Let me ask you this question. Have you been dying in ways you could definitely probably prevent it in Fortnite? Well, this might just be the video for you because we're going to teach you how to change those terrible losses into high IQ clutches that will blow your friends away and help you guys improve fast. Punch your crunch, me where you at? Your motivation guy. That's right, I am back. And today we're gonna show you how to consistently win all your games and make game winning plays without falling straight on your face and getting eliminated. Are you guys ready for this? Let's get this going. Okay guys, so the first thing that you need to master and know how to pull off in any basic scenario is a hype play. At this point, you probably managed to realize that every trio in scrims or the FNCS that ends up winning games and stack lobbies will have the high ground most of the time and they always go for it no matter what. Okay, so clearly, like there's a reason for that. And it's really investing your mats into really going for the high ground definitely is going to be a crucial in winning your games. And it's basically a requirement for succeeding in professional Fortnite. Yeah, sure, a lot of teams still do manage to perform well from low ground. Just look at Sentence Trio, but that requires a ton of practice and mechanics on the level of like a legend. It's more something you should definitely build up to. The high ground is definitely where it's at. Okay, so the first play that you and your trio can do is a sneaky one right here, right? I'm talking about throwing in the back tarp and just straight up going for a kill on the height team so you can just steal their advantage, all right? Now, you can do this in any game mode. It just requires you to be a little bit patient so you can figure out the perfect moment to make your move. Okay, so to pull this off, start by going in the back of your tarp and then looking up at height. The most high ground team will most likely be focusing on what's ahead of them, likely lasering down whatever poor team has found themselves on second height. This means you can sneakily just ramp up through the side to take them by surprise. This strategy will work very well if you have a lot of white heels, like floppers and small fries, but will also work without heels as long as you manage to hug the edge of zone without going into it. And so when a player on the height team gets separated from the rest of your trio, that's your chance. Either focus your fire as a trio with ARs or immediately just blast them away with a close range pump play. After you hit them, you and your trio should instantly start just cranking 90s to really get some fast and immediate height. Now that's a 2v3. You should be able to keep the high ground over the team you're fighting with ease, especially if they start panicking after you eliminate one of their teammates. In stack lobbies, the height team will be constantly spraying and because of that, they might not be able to hear you sneaking up behind them. So make sure you use this strategy if you're trying to look for some easy height and the height team are distracted. This strat will even work in solo cash cups since the player on height will have to instantly drop down after taking damage to get a chance to heal. Okay guys, so the next strategy to get height is a little easier, but it won't work if the other height team is aware of you. When you're trying to go for height, you have to stay ahead of everybody else. If you don't, your attempt is going to be like really cut short pretty quickly. This means you need to be in a spot where you can gain elevation really, really fast. For example, you should never go for a height play in an area that's really congested because you're gonna get eliminated incredibly fast. Instead, you need to buy your time and be patient, you know, waiting for the zone to open up so you can just break out from the pack and full tarp ahead. Once you're in front of everybody else, you can look up at the height team and just attempt to go for a concentrated beam on one of the players with the rest of your trio. Bows will work really, really well, but you know, tap firing with an AR will probably like make the height team panic. So wait for the other team to stop expanding towards you and then take your moment and instantly just start cranking. So once you've made it above the other team, spray them off your lair, man, and just make sure they can't chop you out or connect to you. All right, so one way that you can really improve your Fortnite IQ, guys, is by heading over to ProGuides.com. Our master courses designed by some of the best pros like Mongrel and Clicks will teach you everything that you need to know about winning in Fortnite. So a game winning play that absolutely any player can do regardless of their ability, as long as they have just a little bit of game sense is winning with heal offs. Healing in Fortnite is pretty simple. I mean, all you gotta do is just push a button and then you just use the item to give you your health back, right? Well, despite that, many players actually fail to utilize their heals in any effective way that would grant them more placement points or in some cases, even the win. So the first strategy that you need to utilize is playing heal offs even with med kits. Okay, so whenever players don't have any fish to pop during a heal off, they tend to panic and play really aggressive, even if they have other kinds of heals like a med kit. Now, sure, it takes a little longer to use, but if you do have a med kit, you should still look to pop it when you're in a bad situation or if it's the last zone. All you need to do is take a single tick of the zone and then sit on the edge of your tarp. Start just popping the med kit just a second before the zone hits you, and you're always gonna manage to get it off. This will give you time to just readjust yourself if you have no mats or if you're a solo in a trio filled in game. You know, just after popping the med kit, you're gonna easily be able to run into the zone and position yourself optimally for success. Now that you know what to do, if you're in a bad spot, okay, let's move on to what you need to do in an actual heal off situation. 
All right, so whenever the last zone is closing in and you have a med kit, take a single tick of damage and then immediately just start popping it. However, if you already had damage on you or somehow managed to take more than two ticks, you'll need to look for a siphon kill to really keep yourself going. So whenever you have a siphon kill, pop your med kit and hopefully it'll keep you from dying to the storm so that you can just go on to win your game. Bunch of crunch army. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the question of the day. Okay, so today we want to know what is your biggest struggle in the end game of a Fortnite match? Are you struggling to stay on height? Do you constantly manage to get yourself eliminated while rotating? Listen, let us know in the comments below, and you already know we're gonna check all of them out. All right, back to the video. Now you know exactly how to make height plays and win hill offs, but there's still something missing from your high IQ repertoire. Okay, so you still need to know how to position yourself perfectly to the point where you're set up and looking good for the rest of the game. So positioning yourself and thinking ahead are some of the most important things, guys, that you can do if you really wanna win a highly stacked game, or honestly, like even just an arena match. Okay, so have you ever wondered how so many pros manage to pull zones so easily? Okay, trust me, it's not down to RNG and luck, man, because pros are all analyzing the state of the game before the zone even starts to come in. For example, pros will always start to rotate to the mid zone when they have a chance. Like you should do this as well. And you should never be scared of simply getting in a car or just running toward the mid zone. Basically by putting yourself in the middle of the zone, you're basically guaranteed to be in every zone until at least the half zones. So as you get toward the tail of the end game, you should start rotating toward the edge of the map since moving zones can only pull toward the edge. Along with positioning yourself in the middle of the zone, another way to be in a good position without having to take any risky fights or getting focused on is to stay on the dead side of the zone. The dead side is the side of the map with the least players on it, and you can just easily find out what side the dead side is on by just looking at the map and observing where people are rotating in from. For example, if the right side of the map is the ocean near steamy stacks, that would actually be the dead side. The chances of people rotating in from the ocean are incredibly low, so the chances are everyone is going to be rotating up into the area from the bottom left. All you would have to do is just swim along the ocean and you wouldn't see a single player. By just managing to stick to the dead side of the zone, you have a nice and easy stroll without having to take a single risky fight. Now that right there guys is some real high IQ playing. Okay, so now that you learn how to find the dead side, you should always try to avoid following others to save materials. You know, it might feel tempting to sneak up on somebody else from the dead side for an easy elimination, but by doing that, you're announcing your presence to everybody and really opening yourself up to get W keyed on by another player. That would be the total opposite of high IQ playing. Hey guys, if you guys liked the video, you already know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. And if you want even more motivation, I'm right here. Connect me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Man, I'm so proud of you guys. Keep going. I'll see you soon. Oh,